In this video, we're going to talk a bit about how the concept of a sampling distribution is used to build up a confidence interval. And again, we're going to focus on a confidence interval for a single mean to focus on the concept. So previously, we were learning a bit about if we knew the truth for an entire population, how sample estimates behave. So we had this example. Suppose that we know the systolic blood pressure in a population has a skewed distribution of the mean of 125 and the standard deviation of 20. We're going to take a sample of 25 from this population and calculate the sample mean. Then we learn to think about this idea of a sampling distribution, which described all the possible estimates we could have ended up with. And we saw when certain conditions were met, the sample mean, okay, the theoretical set of all possible sample means we could get, is approximately normally distributed, where we expect our sample mean to be equal to the true mean in the population, and the standard deviation of the mean, okay, what we're going to start to call the standard error of the mean, gives us an idea of, on average, how far will our estimate move from the true mean. And we worked this out to be 4. So we've also learned about the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So for this video, I'm going to focus on two standard deviations and 95%, although these ideas can generalize to any amount of standard deviations or percentage. Using that two standard deviations, 95% rule, we know that approximately 95% of the sample means we could end up with are going to be within two standard deviations of the mean, okay? or between 133 and 117. What we know here is roughly 95% of the time, we're going to get a sample mean that is within plus or minus two standard deviations of the mean. Okay. Or go from the mean plus or minus roughly two standard deviations of the mean. 95% of the sample means we can get will be in this interval here. So you might be thinking at the moment, well, who cares? We never really know um, the true distribution, true mean or standard deviation for a population. And we're not really interested in how likely are certain sample estimates to show when we do know the truth. Right? We're usually living in this world where we don't know the truth. We have to collect a sample of data, and we're going to use that to try and make statements about the population. Okay? But this is actually going to be very useful. And we can think about it this way. If 95% of the time I'm within 2 meters of you, then 95% of the time you're going to be within 2 meters of me. The distance between A and B is the same as the distance between B and A. So we can just change our reference point here. And we can say, if 95% of the time, the sample mean we get is going to be within about two standard deviations of the true mean, then we know that roughly 95% of the time, the true mean or population mean is going to be within about two standard deviations of the estimate. Okay. Or we can go from our estimate, reach out roughly to standard deviations of the mean. 95% of the time, the true mean is going to end up in this interval. Okay, let's take a look at this concept uh, visually. So let's extend these downward. So we can think, when we reach into this population, randomly select 25 observations and calculate a sample mean, 95% of the time, we're going to get a sample mean that stays within this interval. Maybe it's pretty close to the true mean, maybe it's a little bit further away. But 95% of the time, we're going to get an estimate within these bounds. 5% of the time, we're going to get an estimate that reaches outside of these bounds. Okay. In reality, we don't know which data, okay, which sample we've ended up with. Okay. But we know if we go from this estimate and reach out plus two standard deviations of the mean, minus two standard deviations of the mean, we can see it overlaps with the true or population mean, or contains it. Okay. Similar to this one here.
For this one here, if we go and reach out two standard deviations above and below the mean, right, and these we're going to end up with 5% of the time, we can see this interval here is not going to contain the population mean. So in a real world, we only end up with one of these samples, right, and it either contains the population mean in there or it doesn't. Okay. But 95% of the time, our interval will. There's a few things that we're going to need to tighten up about this, and we'll start to do that in a following video when we talk more formally about confidence intervals. So a few things we're going to encounter there. Um, the first one, you may be thinking, when we're taking a sample of data, okay, and living in the world of using a sample to try and generalize back to a population, we're not actually going to know the true standard deviation. Right? It's difficult to imagine a scenario where we're trying to estimate a population's mean, but we know their standard deviation. So we're going to have to replace that with the sample standard deviation. The standard deviation of our 25 observations. And that's what we're going to start to call this standard deviation of the mean, the standard error of the mean. Because of that, rather than using uh, Z, a standard normal of 2, we're going to have to use a T value. And it's going to be something slightly larger than 2. We'll get to all those finer details um, when we start talking more formally about confidence intervals. But it's important to note that um, all the concepts we've talked about hold, and that's why we've left out this discussion for now. Um, if we start to talk about the t-distribution and, and all these things, it clouds the concept of what is a confidence interval actually trying to achieve and what are the concepts it's based on. Okay, and one final thing, we'll talk about this more in the next video, but um, when we build these confidence intervals, we don't end up saying there's a 95% chance okay, that the true or population mean is contained in our interval, we're going to say we're 95% confident it's in there. Okay? And the reason being, and we'll expand on this later, in a real world, we end up with one of these samples of data. Okay? Now looking at this blue one here, there's not a 95% chance the population mean's in there, it's 100%, it is in there. Okay? Taking out this one here, and what's the chance that the true or population mean is in this interval? Zero, right? it's not contained in there. When we take a sample of data, we don't actually know which sample mean we've got and which interval we've got. So that's why we're going to end up saying we're 95% confident our interval overlaps with the population mean rather than 95% chance or probability. So we'll talk a little bit more about some of the finer details of confidence intervals um, next. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel. Like our videos. Share our videos. Statistics is almost as beautiful as a unicorn. Statistics is hard to say properly. And I'll say that properly. Okay.